what's going on guys um so yeah uh metroid prime 4 um <laughs> i don't really know how to start this video um this is probably gonna be a long video and i apologize for the shakiness i'm using my tablet um yeah i still don't have a really good setup so yeah um anyways as you guys all know Today, this morning, Nintendo uploaded a video to their YouTube, Twitter, all that stuff, and it basically talked about Prime 4. It was like a three minute video. Um, Shinya Takahashi came on in a recording and pretty much stated how they ran into a lot, a lot of uh, development problems with the game. And they did not, they did not like the, what was being built basically. They were not satisfied with the quality of it so they scrapped it all <laughs> they scrapped it all and they have restarted development and basically the development's completely like completely rebooted and it's going back to retro studios who de developed the first three games the original trilogy metroid prime one two and three now so what does this mean the internet, like, this blew up the internet today. Like, this is, like, the first... When it comes to the um, the gaming industry, the video game community, whatever you want to call it, this is the big thing, the first big thing of 2019, I would say, that kind of broke the internet as far as the video game community goes. Uh, obviously, right now, the big thing is everyone's looking forward to Kingdom Hearts 3 and Resident Evil 2 Remake. Uh, but as far as big news stories, big controversies, hype, whatever you want to call it, this is it. Like, this is the first big thing of 2019. And in all regards, like, on the surface, yes, it looks really kind of crappy. And a lot of people are... First off, you go on Twitter and you go on Facebook and so many other places, uh, the YouTube, you know, uh, channels and... Uh, things like that, all of Nintendo stuff, and just other places, and a lot of people are saying that there's a lot of people being very supportive, which there is. There is a lot of support to Nintendo for this. Um, I will say that, but people are acting like everyone's in support of this, and that's not the case. It's not the case. I will say I'm supporting of it. I'm supporting of it. I'm actually more supporting of it than most people. I think it's actually a good thing. A lot of people, like... A lot of people are of the mindset of it's for the best, but it's still a bummer. Whereas me personally, I don't think it's a bummer because I look at it this way. If Nintendo thought what they were working on for the past couple of years was troubled and wasn't the vision they had for Prime 4, I don't want that game. <laughs> I do not want that game. I didn't want that game this year or next year. I would rather get the true, the true Prime 4 that would be coming out in 2021 or 2022, which I think realistically that's when it would come out. There was a lot of rumors, a lot of rumors that Bandai Namco was developing it and blah, blah, blah. I never believed those for a second. Everyone put it as confirmed to the point where, to the point where even like some of the official, um, like, uh, or some of the, some of the Nintendo news sites and Wikipedia, and other gaming sites and listings and stuff like I think I think even GameFAQs had it up there at one point that Namco Bandai or Bandai Namco was developing it, and that just simply there was no evidence behind that besides Eurogamer just spouting nonsense, which they've done that in the past, and I don't understand why people believed that there was all this evidence for that, but because right off the bat. When the game was first revealed, E3 was it 2017, um, so about a year and a half ago, they they said that it was a brand new internal team at Nintendo. Bandai Namco is not internal, <laughs> so um, what probably happened. This is just my take on it. See, Metroid. What a lot of people don't realize is Metroid is it's it's when they make a Metroid game, it is of high quality. Definitely high quality. It's one of Nintendo's highest quality series next to Mario and Zelda, probably. Yes, I will admit that. But as far as as far as how iconic or 
in the public's eye, the public's perception. A lot of people will overrate Metroid. And I, I love Metroid. Do not get me wrong. Metroid is awesome. But as far as in the public's perception and Nintendo's perception, it is more of a B-list series. Not in terms of quality. I'm just saying in terms of perception and where it is on the scale of importance. And that's just based on Nintendo's image. That's based on public perception. That's based on sales. Because sales are a big thing that matters. That's the reason why Retro went and made two Donkey Kong games instead of Prime 4 for the longest time. Because, Pro because Donkey Kong will sell millions more than Metroid Prime will. And that's, that's just a fact. And uh, Donkey Kong is more, you go to someone on the street and you show them a picture of Samus and show them a picture of Donkey Kong, nine times out of ten, they're going to know Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong is an iconic character stemming all the way back from the 80s, the arcades. Uh, you know, Donkey Kong is just as iconic as Mario at this point. Samus, unless you're really, unless you're big into gaming, not so much. Uh, if you're, even, even people who don't know gaming know who Donkey Kong and Mario are. So that's, that's the reasoning behind that. So when it comes to Metroid, yes, Nintendo, it's one of their B-series pretty much. Um, but not in terms of quality. Now, the thing about it is the games do have, like I said, they, have real, they are very quality games. But as far as who develops them, it's very, it's very mixed. See, when it comes to mainline... Pokemon games, they're always Game Freak. Mainline Zelda games, it's always the Zelda team, or, or one of the Zelda teams, because I know I know in recent years they've had a, uh, a 2D team and a 3D team. Um, and then, like, uh, Mainline Mario, same thing. They got a Mario team. Like, a lot of those are developed in-house. Metroid, not so much. A lot of the earlier games, sure, were in-house. When it comes to Prime, Prime 1, 2, and 3 were Retro Studios. They created that series... They developed it, yeah. Uh, Metroid Prime Hunters was NST, uh, which is an internal development team at Nintendo, but here's the big difference. NST is internal at Nintendo of America. They're housed in America. They're basically a Western team for Nintendo, just like Retro Studios is like a Western studio that Nintendo owns. Um, compared to a lot of the... R&D teams, the EPD, you know, um, the EAD they used to have, um, you know, uh, all the teams they've had over the years are mostly Japan-based. NST is one of the ones, one of the few ones that they have that's Western-based. And obviously, as when it comes to development, Western and Japanese development is completely different. Completely different. Uh, it's just, it's just, just how it goes. They have different uh, philosophies. Just look at. Look at Japanese RPGs and Western RPGs, and that right there will tell you. Like, even though they're both RPGs, they are both fundament fundamentally, stylistically, graphically, and they're, they're, they're very different. They are worlds apart, JRPGs and Western RPGs. Just Japanese developers and Western developers just have a different way of doing things. So, NST made Metroid Prime Hunters. Next Level Games are the ones who made um, Metroid Prime Federation Force. And again, that's another development partner that is a Western studio. Uh, I know people don't like to talk about, uh, about Federation Force. Personally, I love the game, but uh, I can already see the dislikes. Go ahead, whatever. Um, but uh, uh, Metroid Samus Returns, which came out in 2017. Amazing game. Amazing. One of the best remakes of any game, in my opinion. They really did that game justice. Uh, that was made by uh, Mercury Steam, and they're also they're also Western. You know, uh, they developed um, uh, Castlevania: Lords of Shadows, Mirror of Fate on the 3DS. You know, so they uh, Metroid. A lot of Metroid's biggest hits because I mean, yeah, there's the original Metroid. There's Fusion, Zero Mission, um, Metroid Two, obviously, but a lot of its biggest hits are games like. Metroid Prime and um, Samus Returns, you know, um, a lot of the big games in recent years have been headed by Western development studios. So the earlier games, 
were very Japanese. And probably the most iconic one from the Japanese side of the games is Super Metroid. Obviously, no one's going to argue that. Uh, Super Metroid is one of the best Metroid games, obviously. No one's going to argue that, obviously. But when it comes to that, Metroid Prime is fundamentally different than a 2D Metroid. I mean, it's still the Metroid feel, the Metroid atmosphere, and parts of the gameplay, parts of the heart of Metroid just in a 3D space. But obviously, it's a first-person you know, it's a first-person shooter slash, you know, action-adventure uh, type of game, which is not what the 2D Metroids are. Metroid Prime, you can tell the feel of the game. It has a more Western feel. It was created by Retro Studios, Western developer, you know. So that right there, like I said, that right there tells you if it was an internal brand-new team at Nintendo, and if they were based out of Japan... Obviously, Nintendo's looking at this as we need to make Prime 4 right for the fans. Like, that's just, that's the way they're going about this. And in order to make it right, it has to, as Takahashi said, it has to stand shoulder to shoulder with the original three games. Which means it has to match them in quality and stylistic design choices, um, graphical style, art style, um, the, the atmosphere, everything about this game has to stand next to the others. It just it just has to. Otherwise, you can't call it Metro Prime 4 and have it feel and play and look different. You just can't. So, when you take... That's my, that's my phone dying if you ever beep. <laughs> but um, when you take something like that, developed by Western Studio, and a Japanese team tries to recreate that... Sometimes doesn't always go as well. Um, West Western development studios and Japanese developer studios, they try to mimic each other all the time. Doesn't always work out. This is probably an example of that. That's just my hypothesis on the situation. Now, do I think this is a good choice? Like I said, absolutely. I think this is fantastic. And everyone's jumping the gun. There's already people saying that. It's going to be a dual release like Zelda was, where it's going to it's going to come at the end of the Switch's launch, you know, um, not launch, uh, life cycle, and it's going to launch both on the Switch and on the Switch's successor at launch. I don't foresee that happening. I don't foresee it taking that long. Because you got to think, Nintendo systems roughly run five to six years, depending. If this if the systems are huge successes like the Wii was, it usually goes six years. If they're just average or kind of failures at best, they usually run five years like Nintendo 64 and GameCube did. Uh, the Wii U was an anomaly because the Wii U, you know, it, you know, as much as I love the Wii U, just commercially it, it dived. So obviously that got the plug pulled, you know, like four, four and a half years. But um, the Switch definitely has outsold both the Wii U and the GameCube. It's trajecting to outsell the N64 pretty soon here. So, I th and it's it, it's it's doing better than the PS4 and Xbox One did um, at this point in their life, and it's doing better that than the Wii did at this point in its life. So, I feel like the Switch is personally going to go the full six years like the Wii did, which means if it came out in 2017. You got basically until I think 2023 because you got like 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, so you have about so about 2023. Um, yeah, I'm counting with my fingers. Don't judge me. But um, anyways, yeah, so 2023 would probably be when the next one, maybe, maybe, maybe late 2022. But I feel like they'd I feel like they'd ride it out until 2023, uh, just based on how successful the switch is. So if that's the case. You would need Metroid Prime 4 to basically take mm, about four years. You would need it to take about four years of development time. And I don't think it's going to take that long. Let me explain why. Let me explain why. The reason people are comparing to Zelda is because, obviously, a long development cycle. But what people don't understand is the difference between them is... So, Retro Studios, they've already worked with... They've, they, they created the Prime series, they created this this series. They've worked with it before. Yes, I know. People are going to say, well, a lot of the key people from Retro are no longer there. That's true, but some are there. There are still a few left, plus Kensuke, Kensuke Tanabe, who is the uh, 
producer of the uh, or the 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 Prime series. He's back. He's back at the helm on this one as well. He's always been on the helm, uh, even when it was developed by whatever unknown team that it was beforehand. And um, he he him him and his team. He's got a plan. He's got a plan. We know this for a, we've known this for a while. Even when when they were making Federation Force. He left hints in there. There's a post credit scene that hints towards what could happen in Prime 4. Uh, he talked about in interviews how Federation Force is meant to be like sort of like a side bridge title to sort of expand to get Prime 4 going. So he's got a plan. He's got a storyboard plan. I don't think they're scrapping the story for Prime 4. I'm pretty sure Prime 4 is still going to tell the same story that they were going to tell. It's just obviously the gameplay, the style, the engine, all that stuff's going to be remade from scratch. But I'm sure the story script, all that stuff is pretty much going to stay the same. That's just from my guess, because again, Tanabe, he's had a plan in motion for Prime 4 for a while. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> he's got a plan. Retro, like I said, Retro, even though a lot of the key people have left Retro since the original Prime trilogy, they still have, like, you do know that the other people that have come there since then have been mentored by people who originally did work at Retro. So it's like, while it may not be the same people, it's just because it's the same studio, because they they have some of the same, you know, work ec work ethics, they all work together. Some of the new people came in were obviously trained and shown the ropes to other people. That, that juice is still going, if you get what I mean. Like, that juice is still going. So I don't think it's going to be that big... Of a, of a of an of an issue or departure, and like I said, especially that Nintendo's looking at this like a hawk. Nintendo's looking at this like a hawk. Um, so Retro's already we already established. Like I said they have the mindset for Prime. They they created the series. They know how to handle it. Even with some of the key people gone, they're still that they can still handle it. You got Tanabe at the helm, obviously. Um, they also have worked in HD before. They've worked in HD before with Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, which um, was a really Really beautiful game on the Wii U and on the Switch, especially some of the textures like Donkey Kong's fur texture. Amazing. <laughs> you know, so they they uh, they know how to work in HD. The Zelda team... See, the Zelda team did not know how to make an original Zelda game in HD. They knew how to do, like, okay, they did win Wind Waker. Um, Twilight Princess HD does not count because that was outsourced to Tantalus. So as far as Zelda goes... Breath of the Wild was the first HD original Zelda. So because of that, they pretty much had to get, you know, they had to get things going as far as HD development goes. Wind Waker was more or less just like a test, like a stop. You have to see how well they could do it. And they were doing that at the very beginning stages of Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild also had a brand new physics engine that they had to develop for that game, which lets you manipulate the land and objects in ways that no other game you really can at this point in time. Uh, then there's the sprawling open world and just the freedom of the world, and it's one of the most ambitious open worlds in video games right now. Not the biggest, but I'm just saying it's one of the most ambitious open worlds as far as what it does. So Breath of the Wild had a lot going for it. It was a huge game. Prime 4 will be a huge game, but as far as on that scale of what they're developing and what they're programming, it's not, it's not going to be on the level of Zelda in that aspect. They're going to obviously they're going to introduce new new concepts. Uh, they're going to have to make a new engine and stuff like that. But um, they're going to try to keep it in line with the original three games. Whereas Breath of the Wild was made to break the conventions of Zelda. Prime Four isn't being made to break the conventions of Prime One, Two, and Three. It's made to be a follow up to those games, which is what fans want. Uh, so that's that's the big difference there. Making something that's a follow up to something is a lot easier than making something that's 100% brand new like Breath of the Wild was. And I'm not saying that Prime 4 won't be brand new. I'm saying that, like, I'm con conceptually, I mean. So I think that's something else people don't realize. I don't think it's going to take as long to develop Prime 4 like everyone is basically saying. I think it's, I think personally, I think... Here's another thing, though. A lot of people assume that they just started this, like they just started the new development period. I don't believe that either because, again, with the way companies work, they don't just make a decision and go, oh, all right, go tell the Internet. Like they didn't just make the decision this morning and then make a video for it. They've probably had this because there's a lot of other stuff that goes on behind the scenes. There's a lot of logistics. They, they had to probably meet with Retro and do all this stuff. This A lot of this stuff was probably planned weeks or even months ago. You know, so they just... 
now was the time to formally announce it to us, which I love that they did that. I love that they did that. They could have just outright canceled the game. You know, they could have outright did that, but they didn't, which I applaud. That's that's their dedication to it because they know the fans want this. They know the fans want this, and it's gonna it's 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 gonna be good. So, a lot of other studios would cancel the game, like Microsoft, Scalebound. You know, <laughs> so I applaud Nintendo for for going at it. They're 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 keeping it up, and like I said, for the fans. And it's for a series that, like I said, doesn't sell. Like Metro Prime Four, a lot of people will say that. It, it generates a lot of hype, but as far as sales go, it's not going to sell on the level of something like Smash Brothers or Pokemon or Mario or Breath of the Wild. It just isn't. You know, with the way the Switch is going, though, it would probably sell a couple mil, yes, but I don't think it's going to sell like this. It's not going to be this 10 million seller like a lot of people hype it up to be. Metroid's just, it never does that. So Nintendo is doing this strictly for the fans at this point, you know, because they could have just cut their losses. And a lot of people are, are saying, oh, well, then at this point, it was just a publicity stunt to get them to, uh, you know, basically hype something up at the beginning of the Switch's life cycle to get gen generate sales. And it's like, I mean, I guess you can make that argument, but at the same time, you can make the argument for a lot of other stuff. Uh, look how much stuff that Sony has revealed over the years that took years to come out. They spent like two or three E3s repping God of War and Spider-Man, and <laughs> it uh, took us that long to get it. Same thing with Uncharted 4, uh, you know, Last of Us Part 2 right now is just MIA, uh, you know, and speaking of Sony, they're not really doing much right now as far as telling their fans what they need to. Like, they canceled PSX, they're not going to be at E3, they're not holding any other similar events at this point in time, they haven't really, they've been really quiet on a lot of stuff. They have. They just been very, very quiet. They haven't been talking a whole lot about, you know, some of the games that we that we know are coming out this year. They haven't been talking much about them. Nintendo, Nintendo hasn't really talked too much about the 2019 lineup either. Yes, that's true. But the difference is Last of Us Part Two, uh, Death Stranding, those type of games. They have no release date, no release year. Fire Emblem, Animal Crossing, Legion of Mansions 3, they at we at least know they're coming out this year. So, and we and we can count on Nintendo, even though people keep begging for Direct. I think it's getting really annoying to see everyone begging for Direct every time Nintendo even breathes on Twitter or any social media. But um, you do know there will be a Direct at some point, whether it's this month, February, or March. There's going to be a Direct at some point. And... You can count on Nintendo for that. You can't really count on Sony or Microsoft for that. You you just can't. Um, you know, it's just... And I understand, like, I've, I've been the one that's always been saying I hate how companies announce games so far in advance. And Nintendo did this both uh, with Metroid and Pokemon at E3 2017. Um, the big difference between this, though, is the Switch was an experiment because it's the hybrid. It hits a console and handheld in one. They wanted to show people that they they're, they were trying after after the Wii U they were trying to generate more interest in the consumers' minds and they were basically saying look at we have you know we have Mario Kart we have Arms we have Splatoon Zelda Odyssey Octopath you know Xenoblade all these other games right now and you can we you can play those right now this year or next year you know with Kirby and Mario Tennis Aces and all that but here's what you're going to be playing in the future. You know those Pokemon games that you've been playing on the handhelds? Gen 8. It's coming. You'll be playing that handheld and on the TV. Prime 4, the game that people have been wanting for Metroid from so long, it's, it's coming. You know? Uh, but in the meantime, they're giving us all this other content. That's the thing. And, you know, it, it's just... it's just So a lot of people are saying... First off, a lot of people are saying that the 2019 lineup is ruined. Now there's no Nintendo Game of the Year, blah, 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 whatever. Like game of the year really overly matters, you know. Like uh, it's just it's just it's just one of those things that like I feel like there's a there's a huge list of games, huge huge list of games coming out this year for the Switch exclusively. We already had new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, okay, that's a port. We already had Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes, okay, okay, that's an indie spinoff, blah blah blah, whatever. Yeah, I know people have an argument for everything, but but. We do have Yoshi's Crafted World, brand new game. Oh, but that's a side-scroller. That's not AAA, right? That's what people are going to say. Okay, 
Fire Emblem, three houses. Oh, that's that's niche. That's 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 weebish garbage. Okay, what about um, Damon X Machina? Oh, it looks generic. Looks like junk. Oh, okay. Bayonetta three. Oh no, it, it, it's gonna be bad. And you know, it's just there's so much stuff that. Well, technically, Bayonetta three is not confirmed for this for this year either. But you got so much stuff coming this year, and that's just off the top of my head. You also got like Animal Crossing. You got Pokemon Gen eight. You got Ninjala. You know, you got so much stuff. That's both first party and third party exclusive. Shin Megami Tensei Five is supposed to launch sometime uh, this year. We're supposed to get some more news on it at some point. Yokai Watch Four is going to launch in Japan, whether it launches here in the U.S. you know or Europe this year, uh, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully for Dragon Quest Eleven S as well. There's just so much stuff, and there's there, we know there's other projects on the horizon. We know there is. We know Pikmin Four exists. Where it's at, we don't know, but we know it exists. We also know that um, No More Heroes 3 is a possibility. We know that's a possibility from Suda51. Um, on top of that, we know Monolith Soft is working on a new game. They hired for a new game, a new fantasy RPG game. That's going to be a bit, it's going to be huge. They're always the masters of their RPGs, the Xenoblade series, you know, Xenoblade, Xenosaga, Project Cross Zone, you know, they do so much. Uh, so that's going to be, that's going to be hype, you know? Um, Nintendo has, Aonuma himself has said that they've already begun hiring and working on the next mainline Zelda game on top of hinting that we could get a 2D Zelda. So the 2D Zelda team and the 3D Zelda team are hard at work, you know? Uh, there's, so there's, there's projects that we know are being worked on, but, um, so, so the, on top of the stuff that we already know about, like Fire Emblem, Animal Crossing, Yoshi, you know, Luigi's Mansion 3. There's just so much coming this year and next year, and that that's just stuff we don't know about before any directs. This is stuff we already know about before any directs. That's what I'm saying. A direct could come, and they could announce a new Star Fox game. They could announce a new. Uh, they could announce a, uh, E3. They could announce Mario Odyssey two or something. I'm just speculating, but I'm saying like there's so much other stuff they could announce on top of stuff. You know, they, you know, and, and, and on top of all the stuff we already have, that's what I'm saying. If they were to, if they were not to announce anything at all for the rest of the year, besides what we already got, we'd still have, we'd still have like, what, eight or 10 games that are exclusive from first party for the rest of the year. Like, that's insane. Like, that is insane. It's just, it's just, there's so, there's so much stuff coming and people are saying, well, Metro Prime 4 being delayed just. It ruined the 2019 light. Now, now there's nothing to play. And that I don't understand at all. First off, it was never guaranteed for 2019. It was never guaranteed for 2019. It was always TBA. That's what it's always said on the release reports. You can go back and look at them. So, yeah. Uh, it's never never confirmed for 2019. But if you bought a Switch just wanting to play Metroid, and you don't care about Smash Brothers, you don't care about Odyssey, Zelda, Kirby, Pokemon... You know, No More Heroes, Luigi's Mansion, Animal Crossing, Bayonetta, whatever. If you don't care about, like, any of those games, and all you wanted was Metro Prime, you might not, this might not be the system for you. <laughs> it just might not. That tells me that you probably just like first-person shooters. And if that's the case, you should probably go and buy an Xbox One. <laughs> so, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's, if, if the only thing you bought a Switch for was a Metro Prime 4, and, and you're saying that, Every other game that's announced right now doesn't pique your interest whatsoever. You kind of bought the wrong system. That that I, I'm I'm just saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. You know, but yeah. So there's just so much stuff coming. So I personally think it was a fantastic move. And what people don't realize is that see, I also saw some people say, well, well if if they were worried about internal or you know whatever team was making it, because people still speculate it was Bandai Namco. People said, well, if they weren't, they didn't trust Bandai Namco making a good product. Why did they trust Team Ninja to make Other M? Why did they release Other M? Why did they release Federation Force? Blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. Back then, they were riding on the waves of the, 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 the golden age of Metroid. I would say the golden age would be like, or maybe not the golden age, but you know what I mean? The big renaissance of Metroid was like, we're, we're kind of like in this, we're, 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 we're kind of in a somewhat second renaissance of Metroid. I mean, we got Samus Returns. Prime Force on the horizon, and if we get more projects announced, it would pretty much be a second renaissance. But like the first renaissance of Met Metroid was, because you know, after Super Metroid, Metroid took a small hiatus. It was gone for several years, was MIA on the N64. Uh, yeah, so 
it wasn't until Metro Prime came out and Metroid Fusion came out that the Renaissance, you know, began for Metroid, you know. So that was like Metro you got Metroid Prime, the Metroid Fusion, the Metroid Prime 2, Metroid Prime Hunters, Metroid Prime Pinball, Metroid Prime 3, you know, um Metroid Zero Mission. And then, you know, so you had a whole ton of games, you know, then Metroid Prime Trilogy on the on the Wii as well. Uh, so you had a whole ton of games that were all well received. Well, maybe not pinball, but that's I don't know. But <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned pinball. But anyways, you had a whole line of games that were well received and that came out consistently, consistently across the, the handhelds and the consoles from GameCube to Wii, you know, Game Boy Advance to DS. So there was there was um you know all well received. So they were riding the waves, obviously. So they decided to do other M. They were like, okay, well, we want to do a more ambitious take on Metroid and partner with someone, you know, because that was, that was, um, Nintendo's always been really good about partnering with other developers and people hated it. And that caused them to sort of rethink Metroid for a while. And I don't really know why. The only thing I know about Federation Force is the fact that, um, Tanabe wanted to, plant seeds for Prime 4. That's the only thing I know, really. But I don't understand. I'm not quite sure how they got on Federation Force. But anyways, both the last two games, well, before Samus Returns, it, they bombed. They bombed, um, and they weren't expecting that because they had never really partnered with an outside developer before those two games. So now Samus Returns comes out. They partner with outside developer. It becomes fantastic. They release it fantastic does good sales i think it sold close to a million and it got amazing reviews i actually think it won a couple of awards as well but uh yeah samus returns was a great success great success a brilliant return to form for 2d metroid so prime 4 they know that prime 4 is the golden boy they know it's the golden goose it's 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 the treasure it's the one that people have been waiting for people have been waiting for this for so long and they know that if they screw it up, they they, they they know that the fans have been asking. The fans waited through Other M, did not like Other M. They waited through Federation Force, did not like Federation Force. And so when you have two times where you partner with you know outside developers and they failed, and then you had a third time that succeeded, Nintendo's very, you know, they're very um, finicky about it. So when they see Prime 4 and they could tell... Because Nintendo's smart about this. They've been developing games longer than most other people in the industry. When they when they see that something's not in line with the other three games in the series, they know that this is not right. This is not the game that fans want. They know it, that if they release it, it would be another other M fiasco or Federation Force fiasco. Um, and again, personally, I, per I personally love both those games, but I know other people don't. And Nintendo's... Nintendo's not appealing to just the few people that liked it, like me. They're appealing to the mass Metroid fan base, which is fine, which is okay. That's what they need to appeal massively. Uh, and I, and because I person, I like all the Metroid games. I don't. There's not really one I dislike. Uh, you know, the some the older, the first two, the original incarnations, the first two are hard to play nowadays because we've got such fantastic remakes. But other than that, there's not really any bad games in the series. So, it's just, the thing about it is Nintendo knows. They know they have to develop, they have to deliver a very quality product to satisfy those fans that have been waiting for so long. And they're doing this for the fans. So, you know, I, I guess that that's just the way I see it. That's why I think that they're so hesitant to pull the plug on this. If it was a potential third-party developer with Bandai Namco, or if it was an internal team. Like I said, they had said it was a brand new internal team. I'm still going with that, but either way, they saw that something was amiss. So after the previous disasters, they, they want this to really, really satisfy all the fans. All the fans. And uh, like I said, I, I personally, I'm personally cool with it. I think it's, I think it's good. Um, I think more good comes out of it than bad. And again, because they want to keep fans' interest going, and because they now they know, again, Samus Returns was a massive success. Won awards, got good reviews, sold well, you know. Um, it's been like, what, a year and a half since that game. So you don't think they wouldn't make a 2D Metroid for Switch? 2D, a 2D Metroid is a lot easier to develop than a 
Prime game, of course, definitely. Uh, 2D, a 2D game is just a lot easier to develop for than a 3D game. Not that 2D games are easy to develop for, it's just easier than a 3D game. Just That's just how it is. So, you know, they'll probably make a 2D Metroid. I, I, I actually would bet money on it that within the next year or two, we'll get a 2D Metroid announced for the Switch. I also wouldn't doubt, and I see a lot of other people saying this, I also wouldn't doubt that Metro Prime Trilogy will get a Switch remaster at some point. I feel like they're going to do that. I feel like both of those things could happen within the next two or three years while waiting for Prime 4. And I feel like Prime 4 is going to be probably shown, if not at E3 2020, then probably towards the end of 2020 for maybe a 2021 release. That's what I think is going to happen. I don't think it's going to have a dual release. Uh, I think it's just going to be towards the end of 2021, maybe beginning of 2022, Switch exclusive. You know, I don't think it's going to take all the way till 2023, like people keep saying. Uh, I don't I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, stranger things have happened. Like I said, I, I, I just, that's just my thoughts on the whole thing. That's my thoughts on the whole thing. Um, I get, again, I just, I, I see a lot of people bummed. And me personally, I'm excited. I'm excited that we're going to get the Prime 4 that we deserve. We're going to get the Prime 4 that we deserve. And I see a lot of people saying that, well, now it just, it kind of kills their hype. And they're going to sell their Switch and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's that's a bit ridiculous in my opinion. That's just a bit ridiculous. I'm personally excited. And like I said, in the meantime, I don't, see, I don't, I'm excited for, for Metroid, but um, I don't, it's not at the forefront. The reason it's not at the forefront is because it's not coming out anytime soon. I know it's there and that's good enough for me. Meanwhile, where my excitement lies is Yoshi's Crafted World. Fire Emblem Three Houses, Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion Three. You know, uh, right next, just a couple days. I got Kingdom Hearts Three, which I've been waiting for years for that game. You know, uh, Devil May Cry Five is coming out soon. You know, Pokemon Genie is gonna be later this year. I, we're still getting Smash DLC. Uh, Mario Tennis Aces, Arms, and Splatoon Two are still all being supported as well as far as online events and free content. So there's still so much stuff to play. I'm still playing Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. I'm still playing New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. I'm still uh, I'm still playing Super Mario Party, Smash Bros. All stuff that came out within the past two three months. Uh, you know, all brand new games. Bowser and Story remake on 3DS. The 3DS still has a few gems coming out. So I have games to play. I have tons to play. And I understand not everyone has the same taste as me. That's fine. But if you bought a Switch just for Metro Prime 4 thinking that it would come out this year you were you weren't you were sadly informed you were sadly informed and you probably bought the wrong system you should have just bought an xbox one and bought the latest gears gears of war game not saying that prime is like gears of war i'm just saying that it, to me it sounds like you're more of a fan of first person shooters than you are of more different kinds of games you know, and that's why I game on the Switch is because I get multiple kinds of games. I have a PS4 as well for some of their exclusives, but Sony has just been very generic to me lately, and that's a whole other uh, discussion, whole other discussion, whole other topic video. But um, Spider-Man was fantastic. Spider-Man was fantastic. I want more games like that. That'd be cool. But um, more games like that or Sly Cooper. Like I said, that's a whole other discussion. Um, but uh, that's, again, Nintendo. Like I said, I'm getting... I get strategy jrpg this year with with fire emblem i get my my casual uh relaxing simulator with animal crossing uh my monster collecting game with pokemon you know i get a si new brand new side scroller you know platformer with an amazing art style with uh, yoshi's crafted world you know i get so much different variety in gameplay this year that i don't i don't need metroid this year I never need a Metroid this year. When Metroid comes out, I will be buying it day one, and I will be so excited for it, and it's going to be amazing. I know it will because I trust Nintendo, I trust Retro Studios, and they can take forever with that game. And when it comes out, I will be satisfied. It will be awesome. Uh, I just I just don't want them to keep showing it, which I don't think they're going to because they're not about that. They're not going to keep showing stuff like Sony or Square Enix does. They're not going to be teasing us with kind of like Square Enix teased us with KMR3 for so many years. Uh, they're, they'll show it when it's ready and i'm fine with that because i have games to play so that that's just my personal opinion again this video went on way 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 too long so going on in like 40 minutes now but if uh any of you guys stuck to the end um congrats i don't have anything for you but thanks for watching i guess <laughs> i hope you guys uh and uh enjoyed this um yeah leave, leave some comments below and let me know what you guys think of the whole uh 
delay, reboot, development, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, um, there'll be more videos coming soon. And I just want to share my thoughts on this, my long, long thoughts. But yeah. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. And I will catch you guys later.